Welcome everybody to another episode of the Shallow Water Adventures with Keith and Jeffrey. I'm Jeffrey and... And here's Keith! He's back everybody! I'm back. He's back, he made it. He did not die, so that's a plus. I feel like I died. You feel, feel like, like you I'm died. Dead. Welcome back Keith, we're glad to have you. I'm glad to be back. We're, we're happy that you're here. It was not the same last week without you. I know, you kind of went through my bag, and I'm a, I was a little surprised. I, I, there was something in there I should have taken out. You forgot about and some oh of that well, stuff that I was did. in there. I know. That's all right. Um, but tell me, though, where did you get that bra? I can't tell you. Ah, okay. What's in the bags was supposed to stay in the bag. Was yeah. supposed to stay in the bag. Yeah, well, it was. You know, there are no secrets amongst all of us here in the shallow water. I, no uh, secrets. Apparently, that's the truth. <laughs> Um, uh, but in all seriousness, so how are you feeling? You doing a little bit better? I okay. I feel good, but I sound like crap. Well, but we're you know, surviving. I must say, your voice is very very sexy. You've got a sexy like like smoky voice. Yeah, like, smoke. how much do you smoke these days? I don't smoke. <laughs> I haven't smoked since I was like twelve. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was only a couple times. Until yeah, I got so caught. you know, so we're gonna have you do the outro, and you can do your really. You're like, thanks for coming to the show. <laughs> I'll work on that. Yeah, so that's gonna be you at the end. Um, but welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on this episode. We've got a lot of really fun things happening today. We are actually at. BPS. We're at BPS headquarters today. We've got some fun stuff we're going to do. Um, we are going to answer your questions as usual, so start getting those in, and we'll answer those in just a little bit. Uh, but Keith, what are we doing today? Today we're here at Backwater Performance. Jeff, you and I are going to get a lesson today, and I'm looking forward to this because I duck hunt, but right. most of the guys I duck hunt with always do all the calling. So. Right. I have one in the box. I think I've blown it once. So, and you've never done it. I have never blown. I've never blown a duck call. Um, and I was I was talking, so, and I have mine here. This is my official duck call. It's an echo call. This is the uh, trash talker from Echo Calls. Um, and we are, I'm, I'm gonna open this up and, and get a lesson. And we're gonna learn how to, to do school. it. And, and I'm looking forward to this, because Travis, yes. Who will introduce you to soon? Yes. A lot of you know him because you talk to him on the phone. Absolutely. But uh, he'll tell you a little bit about where he got his instruction, yes. how he's going to teach us, and what he's learned and educate Jeff and I, and maybe some of you out there in shallow water land. In the, in sh in the shallow water, we're going to get a lesson. So that should be. I'm not nervous at all. I am. <laughs> It's gonna be it's gonna be a really good time. But do send in those questions, um, and we'll get to those. But first, we're let's go in and uh, let's go meet Travis. Yep. Let's All go. right. Hey. Say hi, everybody. You're live on Facebook right now. Everybody, wave. <laughs> We are, we are really excited. We're happy to be here. Um, say hi to your loving and adoring fans. We are live. You're live in the shallow water. We're excited. Um, so, Travis, tell us a little bit about you, what you do here at BPS, and how you got started with with the calling and all of this. Uh, so, at BPS here, I work in sales. I do it in sales, answer the phone calls, customer service, kind of whatever needs to be done on the phones, whatever sure. we got to do to take care of the customers. So, um, so you're like the BPS Keith. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Jack of all trades. <laughs> Jack of all trades. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yes. Yeah. So just take care of that route. Good. So as far as the calling goes, I started when I was a young kid, probably teenager. Um, kind of got into it a little bit. Uh, just started dabbling a little bit. It, it always has intrigued me. Um, any kind of hunting with animals, whether it's elk, turkeys, ducks, geese, um, anything I can call, I kind of really just gravitated towards sure um, picked it up wanted to learn more about it uh, did a little bit of self-taught stuff looked at a lot of videos online um, you know had a lot of people that I was able to ask and uh, right. kind of work my way through some of that stuff and got into the contest calling um, to help improve the calling um, you know gained some friendships and some, yeah. some good connections there and just kind of snowballed from there snowballed from there so you call more than just ducks uh, yeah what, what's, what's your favorite like the water, waterfowl. You like the waterfowl water the best. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Very good. What's the hardest? Like, what's the most challenging call? Uh, I don't know that anything is... They're all d different instruments, for sure. Um, they are all a little bit different and take a little bit different knack. I mean, even a duck call from a goose call, which are fairly similar and are reeded, are 
two different animals. Right. So I don't know that any one is hard. Some people would say a duck call is harder to run than a goose call, and the goose, which is probably the goose callers, and the goose callers say <laughs> the duck call is harder to run than a goose call. So right. uh, you know, it kind of just depends on what side of the fence you're on. Gotcha. Very good. Um, all right. So tell me about your um, competition. So you, you've been judging. You judge calling competitions. Uh huh. I started into to the, to the contest calling routines. I don't know, years ago, 10 right. plus years ago. Um, started at the novice level, competed there, started competing at the state level. Um, I actually competed in Stuttgart in 2010, the World Duck Calling Championships. Um, I won the Grand Two Man National Duck Calling Contest, and I believe it was 07. Um, I finished top five in the state for, I don't know, five or six years consecutively. Um, you know, other two man contests, stuff like that. I did some traveling to, you know, Nevada, Idaho, I had to do some traveling mm -hmm. around to compete. Um, and since then, like I said, kind of stepped out of that side and got into the judging side of it. Um, I'm actually on the local calling committee here to help with that calling contest that we put on here. Very good. So, um, so what do you? What's your favorite call? You, do you have a brand that you like that you use the most? Coincidentally, I, I do run Echo. You do um, run Echo. My meat calls are Echoes. Uh, my uh -huh. contest calls are Echoes. I, I run the boss during contest calls for the Main Street stuff. Fantastic. Uh, so. Well, good because mine is an Echo call. I've got the Trash Perfect. Talker. How? How is this an okay call? It's I don't. A, yeah, it's a great call. It's a great beginner call. Um, and, and as you get into some of the calls, some of them are expensive. And see these people, they look at yeah. acrylic call online and go, man, these things are $150, $180. Uh -huh. um, they get into the wood, some of the wood stuff. This is an Echo Timber um, in a green boat arc. Um, I prefer wood, especially okay. for, for hunting situations. Um, just a little bit more mellow, a little bit more meaty to me. Sure. Um, and then, you know, $6,500 $100 range. And then, like I said, you've got the Polycarbs, which is a moldy call. And for the for the price, this trash talker is a, a phenomenal call. Excellent. Well, I'm, I did good then. I'm excited yes, about that. <laughs> yes, um, did. No, Rick did good. You're Rick be did good. I, <laughs> I do want to be a big shout out to Echo Calls. They are um, they're really incredible. They've, they've thrown a lot of stuff our way. They've been a big help in getting this show up um, and running. And th I mean, they're just great. But I do want to say, those of you who, and I mentioned this last week, um, if you follow our podcast, Rick Dunn is actually going to be on our podcast in about two weeks. Be so I hope really, I'm included in that. No. Okay, fine. <laughs> you have to talk to the big dog. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but he's going to be on, so keep an eye out for that because he's, he's really great to talk to. Uh, he knows so much. He's, he's crazy smart about this stuff. And uh, big thank you to everybody at Echo Calls for um, all your help and their, their amazing work for us. So um, let's, uh, let's try some stuff. So maybe uh, you want to just give us a couple of blasts, just kind of like some basic, what does everybody need to know, a, a really good general call overview skill <clears throat> i don't know are these even the buzzwords i don't even know don't the right know. words yeah, no, it's, <laughs> i mean as far as the basics go uh, on a basic duck call everybody obviously a quack or just a basic quack um, and they have greeter calls uh, which is a little bit different cadences okay. and then a feed call and if, i mean if you can pretty much run those three okay. you can go out and, and kill, kill right. ducks with those things so um as far as just basics just, i mean your basic quack is just a basic <laughs> Okay. Very, I mean, we've all heard it. We've all walked through the parks. We've all uh -huh. seen them. I mean, it's right. basic stuff. Yes. Um, the greeter calls a little bit. Same thing. It's pretty much a quack, just consecutive. Some and changed in cadences. So, so right. something like that would be something like this. I'm in so, trouble. Yeah, I know. Something a little bit different. Okay. Okay. Um, no and problem. Then, Basic feed call, and again, when you get into it a little bit more, there is a basic feed call, there's a rolling feed call, there's a refuge feed call. So as far as just the basic, uh -huh. is just a, just a very easy. Something very, very simple. So simple. And it Jeff, is. now you know why I hunt with the guys I do. So I don't have to worry about that. They call them in. And I smoke them. So. Yeah. That's how I do it. That's the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's how I do it. Because I, yeah, after that, S I'm not even sure I want to take my call out of my pocket. <laughs> and it does take time. I mean, it's, it's not so I, and I didn't just pick this up. Like I said, it's sure. taken years and years of practice to get to that point. Um, you pick it up. It, I mean, it eventually, it's muscle memory, just like everything else. The more you do it, the easier it's going to become. Right. Um, just like that feed call. A lot of guys tend to get frustrated with it. Uh -huh. um, the speed comes with, with stuff. Like I said, you, you can start slow. And then the next thing you know, I mean, you can rattle that stuff off as fast as you want to run it. Yeah. So, 
So it, it just comes with comes with time. Comes with so, time. So we're yep. not going to be like that by the so time you're saying, yeah, You might be. What if I'm like some natural at this? <laughs> Very well could be. Yeah. Not going to happen. Yep. All Get right. Back. So let, let's let's try some. I want to hear Keith sure. do it, and I. All right. I'm going to open. I'm going to open my call. You're going to open your call. I'm open this call, know. and. Uh, I too have a really cool echo call. I don't remember which one this is. I got it from Rick. I talked to him personally. Um, a, a you know, diamond I, wood I, with a poly yeah. insert. You know, a lot of times I always grab the wrong end. <laughs> it happens. And I haven't done that. I mean, I've used this thing once last year. I was out with uh, Clint from Mud Buddy, our sales guy. Uh, we were out shooting out of the boat. The boat was giving us away, so he moved the boat a couple hundred yards away. But he couldn't get back to where I was, and I'm stuck in this little patch of uh, Phragmites by myself with this dog, and I'm thinking, I don't even know if I have a duck call. So I rummaged through my bag, my box, and I actually had my call. So I shot five ducks, and I know it wasn't because I was a great caller. Sure. It was just flat it, it and just, lucky, just and lucky. I was a better shot than the caller, that's for sure. Because I, I had like, what no they heard idea. that day. So <laughs> what did they that. hear that day? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they must have liked it. That's, all, that's what I got, man. That's, that's perfect. That's, that's all I got. <laughs> that's great. All right. Which end, which end do I want? <laughs> you look for this end here. The, big, the big end. Yep. So this is the insert. All right. And I see you move, like you're piece. moving your finger. Travis, it moves. And it's just because I've seen people do it on videos. Um, the waterfowl, Daryl, when he calls and blows okay. some of his, he moves his two fingers. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you need to. I, I don't know. Well, That's what why I'm does, here with it Travis. Helps, it, it creates back pressure. Okay. Um, it helps change the tone of those calls. So when it's closed, it's a lot more creates a lot more back pressure, a lot deeper. When you open it up, it's going to be a lot higher pitch. So that's how you get more than one duck out of the calls. Um, obviously, the air presentation helps, right. but also the back pressure that you control with your hand. Well, that's also same as in goose call. If they're close or far away, if they're farther away, you definitely want to be louder because sure. you've got to bring them in. Versus Absolutely. if they're right on top of you, you don't want to scare them to death. Absolutely. Right. right. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, do I blow hard? Is that like I have no? Okay, that's it. Just do it. <laughs> that was more like the kazoo at the end. It was a little. <laughs> hey, you know what? All right, you did it. Okay, so I don't know, faster, harder. Fa that's what that's what she says. And and when you want to get to that point, you want to try to cut every note off. So even like okay, just your basic quack. You before you progress into the cadences, you want to cut everything off and make sure it's nice and clean instead of, otherwise it kind of tends to muddle and they kind of tend to run into each other okay. so you want to cut that off um, as much as possible that air when you do blow a duck call the air comes from here okay. almost like you're fogging a mirror right it doesn't okay. come from like you're trying to blow out birthday candles it comes from here like you're trying to fog a mirror so everything is from your stomach that way Is that even close? That's not even, I don't know. Do blow yours again. Let me hear it. Let me hear it again. <laughs> yeah, so how do you get that? So it's, how do you get that rasp that like probably that, 20 uh, plus years? How and do you some get of the it rasp? is built into it. And it's just, again, just learning to cut that air off because as it leaks through there, it's not going to create that. It's kind of that muddle. You can hear how sharp and, and uh -huh. quick everything yes. is. Make it do it. You do it. It's getting there. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> well, we got a lot of work to do. Boy, that it's is getting there. It more challenging than I would have thought. Sure. So that's why that's why I hunt with people like Travis, Clint, um, a lot of those guys who've been out there for years. You don't have to worry about it. You just sit there, wait for the ducks to come in, and hopefully you get a jump on it before the caller gets to drop his lanyard and his calls and get his shot. And, and that's already... what it is, especially if you're using a goose call to operate with two hands, right. which you use. Most duck calls you run with one hand. A goose call you're running with two. So that's some people like Keith. You're working those birds, and they're coming all perfect. And then they say, go. You're dropping your stuff to get it. He's already stood up and blazing away. So. Right. Yeah, there's advantages and disadvantages to learn how to run a call. For sure. sure. <laughs> I, yeah. I may have not have hit the goose, but I've deterred it from trying. Yeah, very easy to stay away. He's yeah. like, go Get away. If and I then can't. we got to call him back. And then, you, and then everybody else works hard to call him back. That's right. 
All right, so I've had a couple of questions here. Sure. Um, do you prefer a single read or a double read? I, I'm a single read guy. Okay. Um, as far as beginners and basic starting, a, a double read is, is great. Okay. Um, it's This is a double read. Yes, yes, pretty much. I mean, it's got training wheels. Is what it, it, you can refer to it as training wheels. Got it. Easy to learn on. Very good to learn. I do have double reads that I run on my call. They're okay. very ducky. They're very. They're easy to keep tone into. Um, the single reads are a little bit harder to run that way. But I prefer single read. Once you learn to operate it, I think you'll, you'll gravitate towards a single read. You can get more sure. more tone and, and cadences out of it as well. Sure. Um, Corey Arnett, um, are echo calls easy to blow, and do they come in single and double reads? And how long? Have they been on the market to use for duck hunting? I mean, these guys have been Echo Call's yeah, been, been in it forever. Yes. I mean, they, these guys are the are some of the first, but they do have they, they, they do. do sell you a uh, single or a double and and different models. Like I said, this is a single read. It's a timber, right. uh, which is a little bit quieter, toned down. They actually make a single read in an XLT, which is an extra loud timber. So if you want more volume, okay. they make the Echo Boss, which is a competition yeah. call, which is a very very loud single read. Um, and then I know they make uh, a meat hanger, which is a double read. So they do make a couple different options as far as single and double, depending on what situation you're looking for to hunt. Right. Which is why most of us carry more than one call. Yes. They also, they're, they're really great because not only do they uh, turn the outsides, but they actually make the reads. And they'll sell those reads to a lot of other companies as well. So Correct. you may be blowing a different, a different uh, call outside, but you're really blowing an echo. Correct. Because they're great. They're Correct. the best. <laughs> um, let's see. Elliot Schrader. Put it away, Keith. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Elliot. Hey, Elliot, I guarantee you won't win any this <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I come on. Know. In fact, uh, Elliot, I'm going to send you this, uh, this Tangle Free hat. This oh, is, really? Yeah. I like that hat. Is this the one you want to? No, no, I have one. Oh, you have one. Very nice. So this is a Tangle Free. Elliot Schrader, there is a link at the top of this post. Um, click that and fill out the info and we'll get that sent off to you. Elliot, that's exactly why I hunt with Travis and Clint and some of the other guys I hunt with because they take care of all the dirty work. I just shoot. <laughs> nice and easy. Nice and easy. Um, yeah, it's so simple. Um, I do want to remind everybody that is out there and watching, like and share everybody. If you're watching the video, hit the like button, share it with all your friends. Uh, we want everybody to... Uh, you know, enjoy Keith and his amazing duck calling <laughs> skills. His raspy voice. Um, if, you, uh, <laughs> if you're watching this later on YouTube, definitely subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the uh, ring that little bell right there next to the subscribe channel. It will give you a little notification whenever we are on, whenever a new video launches. Um, so you don't miss a single moment. Awesome. Okay, Corey's given some... Um, you're going to need to read this. She's giving you lots of advice. Corey. He's, he's giving you lots of lots advice. Lots of advice. Yes. Okay. About, yeah. Hands. Really, it's for me. Um, we all started somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody's kind of mean to you right now. They're, they're mad what, what, that you what, were gone last week. I'm sorry. I was, I was not out scouting for ducks. I was at home <laughs> sick as a dog. For those of you who have wives or husbands or school teachers, you always get the crud the first time in the, year, the beginning of the year. And that's what I've got. It's been two weeks tomorrow. Trust me, I'd much rather would have been doing Facebook Live last week and kept some of the things in the bag that should have stayed in the bag <laughs> than been at home <laughs> just doing nothing and, and wishing I was dead. <laughs> Let's see. Brooks, Catmull. Sounds like you threw a cat in the shower. <laughs> see, Practice that's... while driving is the key. Your calls go where you go. That is true. In fact, you're not the first person to tell me that, Dave who, um, you all know Dave uh, Reynolds, that's, that's his big go-to. He's always in the car, always practicing his calls, because um, that's, that's a great place, and you don't annoy everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You don't, yeah, you don't annoy you everybody. You don't annoy the whole world, <laughs> blowing your call, exactly. Yeah. Um, we've got the Swiftwater people there in, uh, they're out with their echo calls right now, running havoc on some greenheads right now. Um, oh, I was going to ask you the the season opening. You've been you've been out. I have not been out. You've not been out. I have not. I have been tied up. October is a busy month for me. It's my birthday, the first part of the month. My daughter's birthday. I've got this. It's just been a busy month. So what is I your have birthday? The fifth. The fifth. Yep. So, so last we, week we missed that last week on Friday, nice. and then the opener was Saturday. So well, I had some stuff. Spent some family time with the the family member. Jeff, so, I didn't nice. get to go out either. I was home sick. Uh huh. I'm going out tomorrow, though. You are going out tomorrow. I am going out gonna, tomorrow. So you got to practice. You've got, nope, you've got 24 hours. I don't got to practice, gotta practice anything, man. Just practice oh, shooting. 
Blow some of the cobwebs out of that gun. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. We're going to take you along. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> That's going to be a good time. Um, Brandon Webb's on. Hey, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Ben Bradford. What's your favorite to run in the timber? Uh, that, I, I've never hunted timber, personally, so... Uh, but if I was, I'm assuming, like I said, a lot of the guys will run this Echo Timber. Uh -huh. It's a little bit toned down, a little bit quieter. Um, but again, some of those guys will run the loud. And like I said, they make right. the XLT, which is yes. the extra loud timber as well, um, to reach out. Like I said, a lot of guys will carry multiple. Some will carry a wood and an acrylic. Some will carry a single and a double reed. Sometimes it might be two different single reeds. Yeah. Um, you've just got to have a bag, of, something else in the bag of tricks to pull. Some one day, they may not like this. Timber, and it might be that XLT, it might be the meat hanger, um, and I've done that before too. I'll try to call and nothing happens, no reaction. I will put it down and pick up a different one, and they might spin on a dime. So okay. it just depends. So okay. extra bag of tricks, just keep keep a couple on your on your lantern all the time. Okay. Very good. Do you prefer wood or acrylic? Uh, again, depends on the situation. Um, the most of the time I, I do run wood. Um, on days where it's windy, you know, when you need that loud acrylic tends to, to pop a little bit more, it carries volume a little bit more. Um, so on those windy days, if you're a big, big open water, um, you know, reservoirs, anything like that, you've got to have that volume to get out there. So I'll, I'll, I'll run an acrylic call. Um, if it's close, if everything's coming in fairly close, then, then a, a nice wood call does the trick. Okay, that's so. good. That was, a, uh, that was a good question it from uh, John Dixon. John, John deserves that snapback hat from Sitka. How about that? This is that good hat right here. That's that's a, They're all good. I'm sorry. It's a very use... well wanted hat. Yes, this is it's it's desirable. It's very desirable. Hot, hotly contested. Very desirable. Um, John Dixon, click the link at the top of the post, and we're gonna send that to you. All right. Yeah, that's that new snapback trucker hat. That's a. That's one of my right, favorites. Pretty sweet new hat. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, keep these questions coming, everybody, um, and not just about the calling. You can. Uh, Keith might answer a few questions for your uh, for your motors, and um, Travis also can sure. can talk about some performance issues Absolutely. as well. So don't hesitate to send in these questions. <coughs> <coughs> I will put another okay cough right drop there. in my mouth, though. <laughs> like, holy cow! Um, Joe Christensen is being nice to you. Thanks, he's, Joe. I appreciate that. Yeah, he said that. you know you survived your illness. That's good. Brock Tanner. Anyone else watching from the marsh? We got uh, people are. I feel like they're. Like not talking to us anymore. They're all talking to they're each talking, other. We're just kind of yeah. They're like having this whole other conversation. It, yes, that's, that's what's it. happening it's, right now. That's Playing okay. Middle man. We're the middleman. <laughs> Basically, we are, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> kind of. Oh, okay. this which brings me to another, and I will I will remind you all this. But because duck season is is open now for a lot of people and about to open in a lot of other states, yes. um, I want to see your pictures. Send those in. Um, I'd love to see them, and I'd love to share those pictures. So if you, you've got your ducks and you've got them all lined up or, you know, your pretty sun, not sunsets, but your sunrises. Sunrises. Because you're there in the morning. Um, send me your pictures. The yeah, these guys do too. Yep. You know, so that, that's fine. Just send us your pictures, though. We love those. We want to share them uh, with the whole world. Get those out there. So send in your really great duck pictures. We, we want to see them. And nobody still is not sending any of those those prank videos. Oh, the we prank, yeah, to get we any definitely prank, prank some videos. prank videos. So we know that Jeffrey had an incident with the uh, flip the switch. So last wow. last week, <clears throat> I'm not going to mention his name, but he works at our shop. He was taking out our uh, our boat to uh, do some scouting before the weekend, and he came running in. Keith, Keith, the battery's all hooked up. The motor won't start. What's going on? So I had to go let Dave know that. Uh, oh, did I say his uh, name? Oh, sorry, sorry, Dave, about the switch, because we flipped the breaker on the little breaker box. So guys, if you have yours, remember, if it doesn't start, sometimes you got to reach over and hit that, switch. Over, hit that switch. It's new. We started those about the end, middle to the end of July. We started putting on those on all of our motors. So. Make sure yep. you check the switch because it's happened two weeks in a row now. Yes. We'll see what happens this week. It hasn't yeah. happened yet. Well, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> week's not over. It's week's not, not over. over. And I, I, but it's, it's amazing. All the motors that we've sold that are out there, I haven't had anybody call me and ask me. And that's, I haven't been able good. to tell them, check the switch. It'll, it'll happen. It'll happen. It's still early. It's happened twice at Mud Buddy. I mean, and if, it's, yeah, if it happens there, you know it's going <laughs> to... It's uh, going to happen everywhere. <laughs> Bradley Sneed asked, when does our season open? It actually opened last Saturday last for us. Last Saturday. Here. Yep, and it will run until 
the third week third, in January. January, yeah. second, third week of yes. January. Yeah. Third week of January. We get yeah. a long, a long season. We don't have any of this. 107 days. 107 days. How many days do you think out of that 107 will you go? I mean, do you get out a lot? Probably more than I should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't tell you why. So I, well, exactly. Like I said, oh. more than I probably should more be. Than, more than anybody um, would know. Yeah, I, I do get out my fair, fair share. Yeah. So, yeah to absolutely. try to get out. We were The last time I spoke to Dick Run, Dick Run, Rick Dunn, <laughs> Cut that part out. Um, last time I spoke to, D- to Rick, <laughs> Don, man, it's been a long day. He goes every day. Last season, he had gotten out every day of the season. I, I wish I could do that. But unfortunately, Bill. If you were to build calls this well. You could. I you, could, yes. Then you could get out every well, day. Well, their seasons are a lot shorter. Their days is 60-day season. He got right. out 60 days. C- compared to ours. Yes. They do, I, I believe it's three 20-day splits. Three 20-day so. splits is yep. what they do. It's crazy. Yes. I would be They're like, oh, yeah. hunt, don't short. Hunt, hunt, don't yeah. hunt. It's like, forget it. It's like yeah. 107 days. I'd probably Boom. be without a job because I'd quit it and, <laughs> I, and you, just go hunt. Well, I can't go, then I'm just going to leave. Quit. Yeah, I'm just, I'm out. All right, so let's do, before we kind of wrap this up and answer the last of these questions, let's do a little competition. So I want to do, I want to do a little call and answer. So you call, and we're going to try and answer, and then we're going to let everybody out there judge. Who does it better, me or Keith? <laughs> yeah! I already lost. <laughs> what? I don't think so. Me. It's all right here, me. buddy. This is a mental game. Am. I've already beat myself. I'm done. I'm like, <laughs> no right. thanks. Simple try. was really simple. <laughs> well, we'll, Jeff, we'll start first. simple. We'll stay easy. <laughs> Should we flip a coin to see who goes first? No. Anybody have a... I'll go first. You're younger. Right. I'll let you go I'll be first. So okay. we'll, we'll start us. easy. We'll just do a basic quack, just like we ran over earlier. So we'll just do nice and easy. Okay. Okay. watching because you're going to judge. I want you to post who you think did better, me or Keith. Okay, just okay. keep watching. So now we'll go back to, again, one of the basics. We'll try a feed call. Okay, okay. very, very feed basic. Call. Got it. <laughs> that ain't happening. Okay. stuff and like I said you can get those wine ears and get the bouncing hands the cadences cadence squeals a little bit of
that's why I tell you, I hunt with people that you know, so I don't have to. I own it, I don't know how to use it. But hey, guys, coming up later this year, we're doing it in um, November, two weeks before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and also a, two weeks before Christmas. We're gonna do something a little bit different. Yes. We're going to do a Facebook Live, but Jeffrey and I are gonna ask you questions that you've asked us in previous episodes. And what we're gonna be doing is giving away some great prizes. Some of those are echo calls. And we've got the XLT here with a white. And then looks and like you've the got meat a, the meat hanger in a blue. So these are gonna be available to win in November and December. In December so huh? For our, stay tuned. Yeah, for our Thanksgiving episode and our Christmas, Christmas episode. Christmas episodes. Yep, so we're gonna give these bad boys Two away. cool looking calls that Rick and the boys at Echo of. Uh, donated to us to give to uh, some lucky winner who some can answer winners. our questions to you instead of your questions to us. All so, right, great calls. Like I said, the meat hangers, a double read, the next one is a single read. So two different, Very nice. two different, uh, yeah, animals, and mine just disappeared. Yep, and that one's in the boat somewhere. <laughs> okay, uh, Keith or, or Travis, either one of you can do this one from Logan Kinsey. Uh, my motor is revving up while running and belt tension is correct. 37 HDR. You've got um, probably throttle cable adjustment if your motor's revving up. Check the throttle cable, the way it's run, the linkage. Could be something pinched or pulled there. Because normally on an on a EFI, the computer controls that. So if it's causing it to run up and, and do it on itself, something's a little bit out of a whack adjustment wise. Okay. And the EFIs are pretty easy to. Um, Work with the throttle cable right. underneath the air cleaner and all that stuff. You can get to it a little bit. Okay. So. Is that something they need to call you for? Uh, if they want to. If they want to or if something they can do on their own. Yeah, something they can do on their own too, yeah. Okay. Pretty simple. Great. Um, Tony Fiscus, for your feeding call, do you do chucka chucka or ticks ticks? It's... Uh -huh. yeah, again. I know what that means now. <laughs> I Before, don't. I read it a little bit earlier. It was like, I don't get it. But now I do. Now I get it. Everybody's a little bit different. Um, and, and again, whatever's easier for you. Some people, it's ticka, 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 ticka. Some people's dugga, 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 dugga. Uh -huh. Some people's chicka, chicka, chicka. So whatever works for you. And as you change those, it's going to change again. The cadence, the tone. Right. So, I, I mean, it's not a bad thing to run everything. So whatever's comfortable for you. Got it. Tony, great question. I'm going to send to you, I've got a, uh, this is a tangle, uh, tangle free gun sling. That's for you. Click the link at the top of the post, um, and that's for you. We'll get that sent off to you. Uh, thanks for your ticket, ticket, chuck a chuck a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a what? <laughs> okay. Uh, what would be a void sized, m a void sized, a void sized motor for a 1648 riveted boat? Maybe a good size probably is what he's meaning. What would be a good size motor for a 1648? Three? Uh, I would say a 23. Maybe. Yeah, I was going to say a 23. That's what Clint runs on his, uh -huh. a little 23 with a uh, carb kit, no muffler because where he belongs, the club, they'll allow carburation improvements, but no, no extra exhaust noise. Right. So, but yeah, 23 would be good, a little yeah, mini. That'd be a, yeah, a little mini would be excellent. Got that one. Hello from Wisconsin, from Kyle Wilson. Hey, Wisconsin. Just a reminder to everybody, like and share. Like, like and share and this post. Share. If you like it, you want to see more of it, uh, like and share. We want you to, everybody, keep watching. We want to we wanna grow and, and, and be, we want to conquer the world. <laughs> that, that, one that duck call at a time. Yeah, one duck call at a time. As long as it's not me blowing it. Um, from Corey, do you guys have blind material frames for the boat you guys build for shallow water boats? Yes. You guys do. Yes, we At do. DPS we do here. here. Yeah, we have the frames in stock. You can get the frames without the material. Absolutely. Just give us a call here at the shop. Okay. Uh, Jordan Baldridge. I have always bought uh, cheap duck shells because I couldn't really afford the expensive ones. Do they actually work or are they really all about the same? It's a good price question. I, it's a question I have too. We should, is it worth spending the extra money to get a really great call? Or are some of these inexpensive calls usable? Again, while you're starting out, there's nothing wrong with that call. I mean, that trash talker, like I said, for the money is a great call. It's a good beginner call. It's a great way to learn. If you don't want to keep spending that additional money, spend the money up front and buy a double read meat hanger. And like I said, you can run that call no matter how advanced you get, and it's going to be a great call. Right. And so you buy, buy once, and that's it. And that acrylic call will last you the rest of your life. I mean, unless it gets dropped or broken, there's no reason it shouldn't last the rest of your life. And it's a great call that you can grow into, but as we'll start with as well. Yes. Great. Awesome. Uh, Swiftwater. 
They're on a, they've got their, their 40 HDR. They're on Devil's Lake right now. Fun for them. Lucky um, you. Those Swiftwater That's guys, everybody, job. check we them need. out. They're awesome. We do. Well, Actually, we, we need to get out there and, and do an episode with them is what we there really we are trying to get done. You think you can, those get, guys that, are awesome you can get the, the uh, expenses covered on that one? Uh, <laughs> let me uh, call the boss. Yeah, work on that one. Yeah, I'm going to work on that. Um, so there's just a question about what does, what does BPS do? Uh, so we're the sister company to, to Mud Buddy. If you call them looking for parts, props, performance parts, that's who we get sent to. You get they'll right. send you guys. You guys send them over to us. So we do all the parts. The production stuff's done over there. We do all the all the parts side of it. So all the performance heads, mufflers, uh, cams, carb kits, props, um, switches, air guide switches, everything. I mean, fuel filters, oil filters, spark plugs. You know, drive shafts, bearings, any of that stuff that pertains to those. That's what we do here. Yeah, absolutely. So. But you do more than that. You should do the blinds as well. Yep, we have the you, blinds. Um, in fact, you guys will do other kind of custom work on the boat, like you put platforms on. Yeah, we have boat fishing you platforms all sorts of as well. Stuff like yep, that. exactly. In yep. fact, you've got, uh, we, I got some bow, uh, bow fishing stuff from you guys. You guys so there's lots of products here. Right. A lot of really great stuff. Yep. Uh, okay, uh, Eric, again, what was your all-time favorite size motor and why from both of you? Favorite, favorite all-time motor um, in the thousand years that you've been here? <laughs> I would say now it's the 40. Yeah. I really like it. I like the three-year warranty. It's got some performance upgrades that Briggs has done with the three-year warranty. Great motor. Old school motor that we built years ago would have been the 7,000 because that was just right. an insane amount of horsepower out of that motor. And sure. I've been in one running up and down the river with Clint and at 10 degrees at 30 something miles an hour, it's a little bit chilly, but yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a 40 guy right now. The 50 is a wonderful motor too. Sure. My big push is I like the three-year warranty. That's where I. That's where I'm going to go. Now. Sure. Nice. What about you, Travis? Old school. I would probably say the 45 Black Death. Just because I ran it for years and years, never had any issues with it. Mm -hmm. Again, for what I ran, it was plenty of power. Never had any issues. Obviously, the carb kit upgrades and stuff was uh, amazing. So then I currently run a, a 40 EFI now. Um, haven't mm -hmm. ran so for a, a long time, but it's wearing on me too. Like, I was a little bit hesitant going from carb to EFI because I'd ran carb for so long. But it is wearing on I me. Mean, I do have to say, like, I've been super surprised with the power. Like you said, you know, the upgrades they've made to it. It's it's been impressive for sure. It has. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Um, so far, it's looking like you're the winner. So far, everybody. It's a lot of pity votes, though. I feel like I'm a sure, lot sure. of pity votes. They're all feeling They're like, oh, he didn't give up. He tried it anyway. I'm sick. I'm, I got you know. your back. Here. But trust me, guys. I don't. This call probably will never come out of my my box this year because of the guys I hunt with. I don't want to scare the ducks away, and they don't want me to because then you don't get your limits. So I'll just, I have it there for a backup case Clint gets stranded and I'm stuck out there by myself, which was, it wasn't that bad. It was kind of nice. You know, me and the dog, and the dog actually listened to me. That was amazing. Even better. <laughs> so, uh, Best motor to put on a 1448? 1448, 1448 um, probably a long tail, um, 23 mini. Yeah, it mini, may mini. be a little bit heavy, may need to put pods on it. Um, just kind of depends on how heavy the boat is. Yeah. And what kind of, like, how, uh, do you have other people in you? What's your load size, all of that? Correct. That's yeah, and load, yeah, yeah, load size. And we all know everybody out there who's run a boat, it's overloaded. And underpowered. You know, and under, <laughs> overloaded and underpowered. Always. I mean, we were out two weeks ago with ours, and I look at this, you know, it's 570 pounds. Well, I'm 250, and... <laughs> Jeff and Ambry don't even bring up the other 250, but we couldn't have put much more in it, and we were overweight, so, yeah. But most guys are probably two to 300 pounds or more imagine. overloaded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then same question for an 1854. 1854, you've got to run the 40, 40 or the or 50. Bigger. Yeah, 40 yeah. or 50 yeah. is what it is. And it, it depends on the load. If you're running the 40 with two guys in a... In a Light load, you're probably okay. If you're running three guys and some bigger loads, yeah. you got to go to the 50, or you're going to be a little bit frustrated because it's not working the way you think it should. And right. a lot power of it, to weight ratio. It's, yeah, it is, Travis. It's power to weight. You got all this weight, you got to have power. And <clears throat> so, all right. Um, okay, so Rick uh, Hillicost, do you like the surface drive better than the long tail? I think it depends on the situation. I mean, there's there's times that those long tails definitely warrant, and they would out, you know, perform a, a surface drive. Yeah, but, absolutely. And I I've, I've been in those situations. I've had a surface drive. I had a buddy with a long tail, and 
I'm out there setting stuff up by the time he gets there, but I'll tell you what, by the time we get out of some of that skinny water, he's, I mean, <laughs> I can catch him usually getting back, but he's, yeah, he's up and moving long before yeah. I can get up on a plane to get going. So oh, yeah. they definitely have the yeah. purposes and, and places for both. You know, sure. if you're running longer than a mile or two, you know, I would probably go a little, I would lean a little bit more towards service drive, but if you're running in some real, real skinny water and a lot of mud, you've got a lot more surface to move that prop around versus your surface, surface drive, drive. So, Absolutely. you know. Yes. Once you get used to them, they're not a bad little unit. They no. really are. A great starter motor. Yes, they are. They are, you know. Mm -hmm. Like a polycarp duck off. Yeah. <laughs> which, we exactly. ha which we have to give away. We have one we to do. give away. In fact, I've got two more things that I need to give away here. Um, do you know, Keith, do you know TJ Owings? you know who that is? Not right off the top of my head. Good. Perfect. Because he says he's got your back with the calling. He thinks you won. Okay. So. TJ? I'm going to hook you up, bro. <laughs> I just want to make sure it wasn't this, like a, this like a family from, member yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is from our guys here at Lucky Duck. It's a great little tumbler, and we're going to give you a deep decal. These guys we get our apparel from, uh, great stuff, great fishing gear. Yeah. They've got an orange shirt that I had to give up a few weeks ago that I'm, I'm still a little heart. Man, I have so a little bitter. heartburn about, Jeez. but we'll get this to you. Make sure you click on the link above and get that information filled out. Our producer, Ambry, will get you your stuff off into the mail, either that or UPS. Remember, like and share. We need your like and shares. Now, I do have this last duck call. This is another, um, this is another of the trash talker. But I was really looking for somebody that said that I had one to oh, give this away. If you need a call right now, oh, Jeffrey I... won. Post oh, that no, no, right no. now. Oh, no, oh. you're too late. Too late. There is one. I saw one right here. Richard Rouleau. Jeff. That's all he says, Jeff. Jeff. Okay. For the win. Richard. Richard, this is yours. This is for you, the trash talker. Click the link above. I'm going to send this off to you. And that was made with love from Rick and the boys at Echo Calls. Yes. All right, so we're going to kind of wind it down here. Everybody, thank you so much, Travis. Thank sure. you so much yep, for yep. listening to Thanks us. Thanks for Blow into your ear and embarrass <laughs> you. Uh, that's amazing. Um, is there, like and share, everybody. I, like and share. We have we pay people to stand behind the camera and <laughs> say well, I think, like and share. And I that's think how bad I'm is paying it. <laughs> oh man, that's really good. That's good work. Good work being done. Um, awesome. Um, the last thing that I do want to mention is that we are mere days. Today is what the uh, tenth. So you've got twenty days. I guess it's twenty one. 21 days to enter into the uh, 25th anniversary giveaway before it ends. This is the one we've been running for a long time. This is a, it's a 1754 Pro Hole with a uh, 40 HDR 40 EFI anniversary edition uh, that we're giving away for free. It's on basically a trailer. like our boat. Basically like our boat. It's, it's not our boat, It's it? not our boat. No, oh. it, is, it is not our boat. It is not the salty. The salty is not going away. The salty is staying. No, staying here. But we are giving that boat away. The last day to enter that, uh, that competition is the 31st on Halloween. Halloween. After that, you will not be able to enter anymore. Um, uh, as soon as that happens, um, that next week we'll pick a winner and then announce later on um, in November. Uh, so don't miss out on that. You can go. We'll post the link um, in these comments where you can go and enter to that. Um, one of the things we really love for you to do is, like I said, is subscribe on the YouTube channel. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, hopefully you've already subscribed. That'll get you an entry, uh, but definitely do that. That's one of the new ways. Can we tell them a little bit about some things coming up on YouTube? Maybe yes, some, of course. We're, we're uh, working with uh, our technician, Enrique, or Ricky as we Ricky. call him. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing some uh, maintenance stuff, some videos, how to tear things apart, how to put them back together, go into some other detail. Yep. that Glade and the boys at BPS haven't shared on their website. We're going to go into a little bit more detail with him uh, and do some videos. We'll be posting those on our Facebook and also YouTube where you'll be able to go and watch those. We've got a lot of things that we're working on. Be patient. We will get them out because Jeffrey is the driving force behind Keith and Ricky to get this stuff yes. done. Because we've got a lot of people that want to know how to do a lot of simple things. And sure. if you've ever tore one of our motors apart, Travis, I remember when you first started here, you couldn't do anything. Now, <laughs> except blow a duck ball. I mean, anything motor-wise, I mean. He Can really didn't know what he did. Right <laughs> he really didn't have, I mean, he could do the basic stuff, but now the guy belt changes, clutches, cams, heads, 
<laughs> he do, yeah, he does it all. So he's come a long way. But that's what we want these videos to do. Yes. Is to teach you because what Muddy what Bud Buddy builds is not contagious. difficult. It's just a little bit scary the first time you tear anything apart. But once you get it torn apart, it's fairly simple to put it back together if you take a few steps. But we will have stuff coming down the road to help yes. you. And if you have, there's things that you want us to show, send us in yes. some uh, requests. Absolutely. Let us get them out there. We've got, uh, we're gonna do the HDR transmission seal replacement. We've got uh, throttle cable one throttle coming cable up, I believe. One. Is that next week? I don't remember. I'm not sure. I know I, we got the throttle cable. We're gonna show sure you how soon. to lube your throttle cable to get it ready for the, the winter, get the water out of it, how to keep it safe. And we'll have some don't do yes. this to your throttle cable. Absolutely. So, and the other thing with that is, that especially this time of year, we're getting to that busy time of year, and everybody's got phone calls, whether it's questions, technical help, ordering parts. It, that stuff, when we can just direct them, or the receptionist can direct them to a website or a YouTube channel right to pull here. that stuff up. So, oh, here's it's all right here. We can get them. It helps cut down on some of those phone calls, especially like I said, it's that time of year, you know. And with that, like I said, just be patient with us, Keith, myself, Corbin, everybody here. We do our best. We will. Just if you call and you get a voicemail, please leave a voicemail. We will return your phone call. It may be an hour or two. We get back as soon as we can. I know you do the same thing. And it's just that time of year and everybody needs their stuff and they all need it yesterday. And we do our best to get that stuff out the door as fast as we can. We don't want to sit in here any longer and you guys do. So again, during that busy size season, just be patient with us for sure. It was a good 50 to 60 phone call and email day for me on Monday. Oh yeah. It's, and it was like, it's I, I went home and was like, I'm, Pushed. <laughs> yeah, my brain is much more. Yeah. Corbin and I are the same way. Monday, it's, it's, it's been busy. So Mo Mondays, up. Mondays are hard days. Yes, they are. They really yeah, are. They've been out on the weekend. They've yeah. been out on the weekend. So. No, I get it. Patience. That's, yeah, patience. that's the word of the word of the day. Patience. Absolutely. Word of the next three months. <laughs> the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the day. Yeah. <laughs> the next hundred and four days left. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you everybody for watching. Next week, next Wednesday, um, we will be on. Um, at 3 o'clock as usual. Um, ever do we know what we're doing? I do not remember. Oh, oh it's the decoy pattern. Decoy we're going to be exploring some um, decoy spreads. Um, that's going to be really fun. So tune in next week, 3 o'clock on Wednesday. That's Mountain Standard Time. Um, we're going to be right here in the shallow water again. Um, until then, I'm Jeffrey Whitlock here with Travis and Keith. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. See ya.